Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the CRX again. So today we're going to work on getting the ECU mounted up. I'll show you about that because there's not a whole lot of room underneath the dash of these. So work with what we got and then I'm going to be finishing the fuel system. I got all the braided stainless steel fuel line that's got Teflon coating on it. Um, two Summit inline filters. And then the pump that's already in there is a and you saw, and saw in a previous video, I got the pump mount. It's a Walbro 255. I ran, it's going to be 6AN fuel line all the way up to the rail. But uh, let's get this particular car and set up. Um, I'll come show you. There's not a whole lot of room to mount the ECU in here. I mean, I thought about maybe back there, but then it's too close to the heater core, something ever happens. And then something I hate when people do swaps in these cars is the ECU sits on the floor and it gets not kicked. Um, usually factory, these come under the passenger seat, but if it was a factory fuel injected car, so it's not. So what we've decided to do is put the ECU in the glove box, easy access out of the way <clears throat> it looks a lot cleaner so uh come over here and show you what i have to do to gonna make this fit right so oh where'd i put that piece well i can't find the piece i cut out but uh this was uh, it had this area was filled in so that is i went ahead and cut it out um, so the wiring harness can actually come through here and then we'll mount the ECU up to here and then it'll have room to move and so forth. So I'm going to go and get that cleaned up and finished and then drill the holes for the ECU and then we'll get it mounted in the car. So I got the ECU mounted into the glove box. Uh, it's currently all held in by this, uh, bolt, which it's pretty solid regardless, but I just used a... M6 nut cert, and then as you can see, there's a couple washers there, and then the six amp bolt, which is 10 millimeter, and it's it's got a little little wiggle room, but you kind of should be fine once everything else is in there. But we're gonna go ahead and get the glove box in, and then I'll show you guys with the wiring and all that stuff shoved up or inside the glove box. So as you can as you can see, I got the ECU mounted up. Um, and that's what I had kind of hard to see. I'm going to get this a little bit better view. Cut those holes through so the wires come through there. And then everything opens and closes like a factory glove box. So you can still keep stuff in there, your insurance paperwork, whatever. But uh, pretty happy with how that turned out. And then all the wiring's tucked up and hidden away. So today is the day we're going to do the fuel line. Uh, I got my braided fuel line, all my fittings, and then what I'm doing over here is taking these, I don't know what you want to call them, but it's, it's a clamp. I don't know what the technical is, it's just a clamp, a piece of rubber around it. Uh, I'm using an M5 nut insert, and I'm drilling out the holes to fit the M5 nut insert, because the way I'm going to mount these... Uh, the nut cert's going to stick through it a little bit, but, uh, so that's how I'm going to mount all the fuel line to the car with these, so it's nice and rigid, but, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get the rest of these drilled out, and then we'll get to, uh, getting the line installed and showing you how to do all that stuff. The hose I am using is a 6AN. It's a braided stainless steel with a Teflon coating, which gives that black. It's durable. Um, so uh, doing AN fittings can be kind of tricky. So if you've never done it before, there's some good videos on YouTube and stuff. Uh, but it's, it's just, you got to take your, take your time. Be patient because it can poke you or you can ruin stuff. So we're going to go ahead and get started with that. I'm taking these washers and opening the hole up to a quarter inch so it'll slide over the nut cert. It's going to take about three washers to make up the space of the uh, crushed nut, 
Zert fitting. I'll show you, or not Zert, but I've been calling them Zert the whole time. Uh, Draw a blank on what they're called, but I'll get back to you on that one. But uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish drilling the rest of those out. It's over it, or inside of it, I should say. So I got the M5 nutsert in. I put it in backwards, I guess, if you want to be technical, so it's not sticking up through the floorboard. As you can see, it's about how long they are, and then they that beveled area crushes and shrinks it up. But So there's that up there, and then I'll show you on the bottom of the car. And then that's what it looks like sticking, uh, sorry for the bad lighting, on the floorboard. When I put my clamp on, I'll put a couple of washers in between there to space it out. I'll show you guys that here in a minute. But uh, So I'll be mounting one of the fill filters right here on the frame or body rail next to the torsion tube. It sucks it up the most and it's the most protected. So I'm going to get that mounted up and I'll show you guys what I'm working with. For the two filters, I am using inline filters. One, they're both Summit. This one is gonna go underneath the car and there's another one that connects to the rail. These are just inline filters. I think it was like 27 or 28 bucks. This is what I have on my car. Seems to do well, pretty well so far. So that's what we're gonna use on this and they're serviceable, you can clean them. Uh, you take off this end, it unscrews and you can uh, clean the filters because it comes with, a, comes with a, a mesh metal filter. but uh, So we're gonna go ahead and get this installed and I'll show you guys with the bracketry and stuff. Got the filter mounted up. It's pretty solid and there's not going anywhere. Now I was saying about the washers, I know it's bad lighting, but I had to take up a little bit of the gap. So that's what that was there for. Once I'm all finished with this, I will go ahead and Loctite all of the uh, bolts so it doesn't jiggle out. And then I'll put some sealant on the other side so nothing leaks through. But uh, there's that. So we're going to go ahead and get the fuel line ran from here to the pump. So what I was saying about uh, putting these on is I like to go counterclockwise. It slides on a heck of a lot easier. And then... It's hard to see in there, but there's a flat surface that the hose butts up against. And then, like I said, I like to take a little bit of WD-40. the threads a little bit. And then they just spin on. So they make a special wrench for this that I don't have because the fittings are aluminum and they make an aluminum wrench, wrench so you don't gnarl the uh, fitting up so much. Um, I don't do this enough to justify buying them. So I'll take my chances and potentially scrape it up. I mean, it's not too bad. I didn't really scrape much, but... Uh, that's how I like to put AN fittings in. So this will be the start of the other side that goes to the fuel rail. Like I already showed you guys, I got the other end done. So I'm gonna get back to that. Got the first half of the fuel line done. This goes from the pump to the filter that's midway at a straight fitting. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this installed, finished installed in the car now, and then I'll work on the other half. But I'll get this installed and show you guys what it looks like. Got the fuel line ran all the way down to the filter. You can kind of see there and then it comes up and over and it goes up through this area and then into the pump. Now, that may be concerning to some, but this car will probably never be lowered. 
So I'm not too worried about that. And it's above the lowest point of the car. So it should be fine. If not, I guess we'll address that issue. But that's about the only way to do it. Because there's, as you can see, the bottom of these cars are pretty flat. So what, that's kind of how my cars ran. And it's lowered. And I haven't had any issues. So this should be fine. Got the rest of the fuel system finished up. So I'll take you from the fuel rail back. So what I ended up doing, I don't remember if I previously stated this or not, but uh, this is some inline filter. It's similar to the one I had. Same thing I have the one in the back. It's just, it has a 90. It goes to a straight A in fitting. Fuel line comes over here. And then drops back down here between the brake lines. And then down the fire a little bit more. Loops through the cross member. So we'll come down and I'll show you what I'm talking about there. So it comes from the filter and then up. And kind of up through the sway bar. There's plenty of room for movement. So I'm pretty happy with that and then one thing I did notice the shift linkage kit is I had this bolt and knot here switched around which was causing it to rub into the this part of the shift linkage and uh, not allow it to go into fifth gear so if you install one of these kits make sure the bolts aren't gonna run into the other linkage so I ended up buying 16 feet of the line and I'd say I got about four feet left and then a few fittings left, one straight, two 90s and a couple 45s. So I'll just save that stuff so That'll for be later. the end of the video. Um, I say it's pretty successful. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, so if you have any questions, comments, you know, go ahead and Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys later.